Hello, I'm Michael Harrop with humanmicrobes.org. I'll start off with a summary and then go into the details. The short version is that the microbes in your gut regulate the health, development, and functioning of the entire body. It has been shown that transferring these microbes from a healthy person to a sick person can have numerous benefits. The easiest way to do this transfer is by using poop slash stool. This is called fecal microbiota transplant, or FMT. There are lots and lots of people who need beneficial microbes, but the people who qualify as high-quality donors are fewer than 1 in 1,000, and it's been very hard to find these people and get them to sign up to be donors. Top young athletes are some of the only people who qualify. Humanmicrobes.org is a project designed to find these rare, healthy people and connect them with researchers, doctors, and individuals. You can visit the website to sign up or to find a donor. Now I'll get into the details. Citations will be posted in the video description. In recent years, research in the area of the microbiome has taken off due to advances in detection and sequencing technology. The gut microbiome is an extremely complex ecosystem that we're only beginning to understand. All living things originated slash evolved from microbes. Our mitochondria are a specific example. Today in 2019, it's understood that the gut microbiome interacts with and regulates the entire body. Everything from digestion of nutrients to genetic expression to the immune system and inflammation, production of hormones and neurotransmitters, signaling to the nervous system, including the enteric nervous system and vagus nerve, bones, obesity, etc. A 2018 review said, it is now clear that the gut microbiota contributes significantly to the traits of humans as much as our genes, especially in the case of atherosclerosis, hypertension, obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, gastrointestinal tract malignancies, hepatic encephalopathy, allergies, behavior, intelligence, autism, neurological diseases, and psychological diseases. It has also been found that alteration of the composition of the gut microbiota in its host affects the behavior, intelligence, mood, autism, psychology, and migraines of its host through the gut-brain axis. Right now, since the gut microbiome slash FMT research is fairly new, the FDA only allows doctors to do FMT for C. difficile infections that haven't responded to antibiotics. In my opinion, this is a fairly good rule. There are a frightening amount of doctors and researchers with very poor understandings of general health, the gut microbiome's impact on the entire body, donor quality and screening, and thus are using dangerously low quality donors and thus harming patients. Giving them the green light to do FMT for anyone would be dangerous at this point particularly due to deficiencies in donor standards and availability. Currently, there are doctors that use a national stool bank, Open Biome. You have doctors that use the hospital's private donors, and you have doctors that want patients to provide their own donor. There is similar variability in clinical trials for their donors. There are some individuals who got screened by a doctor and were selling their stool directly to people who couldn't find their own donor. Unfortunately, these donors weren't the highest quality and thus not highly effective. The humanmicrobes.org project is trying to expand this type of thing while raising the standard of donors, helping people find safe and effective donors. It seems that fewer than 0.4% of the population qualifies to be a high quality, safe and effective donor. Open Biome touts a pass rate of 3%, but there are significant problems with their donor quality. One Danish group accepted 3 out of 700 donor applicants and still wasn't able to find any ideal, highly effective donors. A major problem is that the vast majority of the population is in poor health. Human health, development, and function is multifactorial. Genetics, epigenetics, microbiome, diet, environmental slash industrial pollution, socioeconomic influences, etc. And each of these interacts with each other. Much of the microbiome is heritable, and the damage we've been doing to it compounds over generations. This extinction of our host native gut microbiome that's been evolving alongside us for millions of years is a climate change level threat. A number of research groups have gone directly to secluded tribes such as the Hadza, but using them as still donors isn't currently feasible, so we have to find people in modern society in peak physical and mental health with unperturbed, disease-resistant gut microbiomes. Due to the difficulty of finding high-quality donors, nearly all the clinical trials, doctors, stool banks, etc. are using low-quality donors, which is both dangerous and ineffective. Many patients are left to find their own donors, which is nearly impossible for most of them. Basically, top young athletes may have stool that can cure a huge variety of diseases and significantly raise the level of functioning of the average person, 
but we can only find out if we get them to sign up to be stool donors for clinical trials. And if they're willing to donate stool to other things along the way, that's great. I'm going to briefly discuss some related shortcomings in the medical system. Despite widespread assumptions, getting a degree in a particular field does not make a person all-knowing nor an expert in everything related to that field, partially because of deficiencies in the education system and partially because there is new research coming out every day. A staggering 36,000 randomized controlled trials are published each year on average, and it typically takes about 17 years for findings to reach clinical practice. What a degree does is give someone the foundation to better seek out and analyze available information, but the actual seeking out part is vital. Doctor knowledge varies drastically due to the lack of systematic updates, resulting in huge discrepancies in knowledge and recommendations from doctor to doctor. There was a great talk on this given by a group of doctors at the EU Parliament. Even many of the doctors and researchers specializing in FMT are not completely knowledgeable on everything they should be and some of them seem to be resistant to reviewing all the evidence and altering their current understandings based on it. I've seen some degree holders be critical of DIY, do it yourself, and while there is some merit to that in that many DIYers are not doing adequate learning prior to doing FMT, nor bothering to track and report results, and many are using dangerously low quality donors, though typically due to lack of other options and higher quality donors, many similar issues exist within official sources of FMT such as hospitals, clinics, and clinical trials. I've been writing to hundreds of doctors, researchers, government bodies, and news outlets about these issues. The most complicated thing about FMT is finding and screening a donor. The procedure itself is extremely simple. So if you're not needing a doctor to provide a donor for you, there's very little reason to have a doctor do the FMT. I would argue that having a doctor do the FMT is actually worse. It causes delays between the time the donor has their bowel movement and when it gets transferred into you and doctors typically administer it via colonoscopy, which comes with risks that include perforation of the colon. Humanmicrobes.org does invite doctors and researchers to collaborate though, and I personally solicit feedback and critiques from doctors and researchers. I certainly do not want to be putting anyone at risk or spreading misinformation. Ideally, all FMTs would be occurring in clinical trials under medical supervision with high quality donors. But despite all my efforts over many years, I haven't been able to bring about such a thing. So if they're not going to provide that, we're not just going to sit around and die. I mentioned some of these things because stool banks, hospitals, and researchers from the big universities should absolutely be trying to recruit top college and professional athletes to be stool donors. But for some reason, they haven't been, despite all my efforts to get them to do so. So if they're going to drop the ball on something this important, then I guess I'll give it a go. There are a variety of other people in clinics around the world taking advantage of desperate uninformed people, offering FMT for huge amounts of money but not providing proof of donor quality and outcomes, and lacking the requisite knowledge, expertise, and competence to deliver a safe and effective service slash product. Since donor quality is by far the most important factor in FMT, and since it's something that's been deficient at virtually every source of FMT for many years, that's the focus of humanmicrobes.org. I'm someone who's been on disability for over a decade due to numerous health problems, and largely confined to my apartment and bed. Since around 2014, I've been following the microbiome research daily, largely thanks to microbiomedigest.com. After a couple of years of following the literature and seeing how many researchers and doctors were not following it, and thus poorly informed on it, I started cataloging and summarizing it at humanmicrobiome.info to give professionals and laypeople a place where they could go to find accurate, up-to-date information based on the latest research on topics relating to the microbiome. During this time, I've done FMTs from nine different donors and published my detailed experiences and lessons and shared it with hundreds of researchers and doctors working in the field. Based on my observations of researchers, professors, and doctors, my dedication to this topic has made me one of the most knowledgeable people in the world on the gut microbiome, FMT, and human health and development. Based on my experiences, others' experiences, and the literature, I've been convinced for many years that FMT has the potential to be a panacea. And if I'm able to find a high enough quality donor, I could go from bedridden to professional athlete within a year. I was devastatingly close to acquiring such a donor. In my opinion, the main hurdles preventing FMT from being a panacea are number one, donor quality, Number two, replacing the established microbiome with the donor's microbiome. 
Simply adding some microbes to an extremely complex ecosystem isn't going to completely replace it. Many of the donor microbes do not take hold in the recipient. Techniques to clear the intestinal mucosal lining and biofilms is probably an important avenue not yet available. I worked with another worldwide stool donor acquisition project for a couple years before starting up this one in order to maintain my independence. People who sign up to be donors at humanmicrobes.org can choose their recipients. If you have a limited time, you can choose to only be a donor for a clinical trial, but if you're not picky, you can sell your stool every day to people in need all over the country. Stool can be shipped on dry ice, and we can keep you as anonymous as you want to be. We can also try to see if there is a doctor or hospital in your local area who wants to work directly with you. Humanmicrobes.org puts potential donors through a detailed health questionnaire, verifies physical fitness, stool type, and stool consistency. And the next stage is stool and blood testing. All costs for testing, materials, dry ice, and shipping will be covered by us or the recipients. If you qualify as a high-quality donor, then you and your stool are extremely valuable to the future of the human race.